Got an 85 Bendix here for my 85 spray. I'm gonna open it up and show you what's inside it. Um, first thing I do is get this ring here off. And I've already spread this one a little bit um, to help with that. You can get a tool like this that when you squeeze the hand grip, it opens that way, reverse of the pliers. I have one, but the tip on mine is a little too thick to really make it useful. So I had to take some thin screwdrivers and kind of cram into the that, that ring and try to open it. But if you had a, a, a finer tip here, you would be able to make this work. So basically you need to, to get it out of this groove here, pry open that, that ring, so then you can loosen it up enough to be able to slide it off the end here. And then when you put it back on, slide it down and then crimp it back down and it, it'll retain this washer. So this washer here holds this spring down, which gives it a little bit of assistance. And I'll show you how the Bendix works to push the retracting part back in. And here's a spring. The four or five Bendixes that I've encountered that I've taken apart, they're all kind of weak. It's not a super strong spring, but I don't think it takes a lot to do what it needs to do. Because a lot of it's just momentum of this Bendix anyways. So what, the way it works is your starter starts to spin the Bendix. Starter pin is like right here. And it starts to spin the Bendix really fast. So as it spins, there's gearing in here that causes this part to come out. So this is spinning. The front part comes out, out to about where the washer is here. And then it can't go out any farther. And as it's turning, it starts to engage the flywheel, which is here, and turn the flywheel. So this whole thing is all very rigid at this point, and it's turning that flywheel really hard. Then a two or three cranks of your engine with the flywheel turning will start to spin the flywheel faster than the starter is spinning the Bendix. And what happens is, you can, you can see it if I hold this firmly, I spin the starter, it comes out, contacts the washer. The whole thing is turning now, turning the flywheel. But then as the flywheel, which is now going in this direction as well, goes faster than the Bendix, watch what happens when you turn the Bendix that way. It retracts. It's retracting physically. That spring isn't pushing it. But the spring's helping it, I believe, to stay back in that position and not bounce around or oscillate and touch the flywheel gears again. I believe that's the purpose for it. It's really not what's ejecting it back in because the momentum and speed of that flywheel is throwing it away and getting it disconnected. So then it goes and stays back. So if I was to show you the inside pieces here, I'll unspin this the whole way, which it wouldn't normally go past that washer and then it'll come out. And then you can see inside here, that's that gear that's driving the Bendix out as the starter turns it. And then inside here, there are some pieces that act as like a weight and they have some room to move. So I think that centrifugal force helps them spin it up even faster, make it a little bit of a stronger punch. And these things have come right out because when they're new, and I have another video clip of a of a different Bendix that has this spring still. There is a spring that rides right along in here, the whole way around. It's just a round spring, very, very fine, very tiny. And they rust and they disintegrate and they're gone. I guess they're not totally required for the thing to work, but probably in the best scenario, if that spring's there, it might help with the momentum. But these three pieces, they, you can just take them right out. It's helpful for cleaning and wire brushing. Um, this piece, there is a nether C-clip. A little hard to see, but it's holding this washer on. And that C-clip rides right along this edge. 
You could take that off as well, get this out and take out these pieces and probably clean it a little further. But those C-clips have been problematic for me, so I don't want to mess with this one any further. I think I can clean it enough uh, to restore this piece as is. So putting it back together, it's not, not too tough. These things fit in pretty simple. They sort of slide in there like this. Then I'll take the shaft and I'll go in. And this is also threaded in here. That's how that gear works. And I'll just kind of spin it in. And now this outside cover holds those pieces from falling out. If I open it up the whole way and shake it, they'll fall out. Now I'll put my spring back here, my washer. And my snap ring. <laughs> there we go. There. Now with him back in place, I'm going to take a pair of pliers and just squeeze that shut. And I bent these out a couple times and they seem to still hold okay. They're pretty strong. And now you can see I tighten that, that groove in there pretty tight. It's, it's in good shape. It's not going to come out. It's going to do its job to hold that washer there. So that's it. This is an 85 uh, Bendix. You can see that spring helps it come back, but knowing that if you spin it the other way faster than this is turning, it's going to go back all by itself. So here's a brand new Bendix. Got the 30-year-old box. That should be the part number for an 85. And something you can see on here, on a new one, is that internal spring. See that? It's silver. Goes all the way around. I don't know how important that is, but on an old 30-year-old spree that's been rusting out, that spring's gone. And I don't know, I think when it's getting up to RPM, I think that helps with the retraction of the Bendix. This spring here pushes back, obviously, pushing down. But I think that one, when the centrifugal force spreads those parts out, which causes this to move this way and, and jut out, I think that that spring helps with that, it stabilizes it or returns it, I'm not exactly sure. So that's the uh, inside and out of a Honda Spree Bendix. Hope that helped you out. Have a great day.